what's up? So, so in yesterday's video, guys, we looked at a bunch of the base level new things that were added into the Fortnite Chapter 2 map. Today, what I wanted to do is take things a step further going beyond the surface and look at some of the more hidden and secret Easter eggs within Chapter 2. With an entirely brand new map comes so many secrets, Easter eggs, and leaks. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, and uh, 12 in total. Now, before we do get into it, guys, if you are new to the channel, I'm going to encourage you to please subscribe, hit that red button, join the 100,000 people that have subscribed to us in the last few days. That's all, and uh, let's get into it. So coming in at number 12, let's talk bunkers. You guys remember way back in the old map, in season three, when a bunker was added to Wailing Woods, and we talked and talked and talked about it. We're like, dude, it's gonna do something, it's gonna do something. And then it never really did anything, but an iceberg crashed into the map in season seven, and another bunker came with that, and that one also didn't do anything. Did you enjoy that non-existent storyline thread? Well, if you did, you're in luck. And if you didn't, I've got bad news for you. The bunker has returned. Located to the east of Retail Row, just on the coast, there is a suspicious looking bush, which is surrounded by two trees. And as you get closer and closer to that bush, you're gonna start to see a familiar piece of metal. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you break that bush to see the bunker is back. But it, it, it doesn't stop there. I'm sorry, I wish it did but it doesn't. Head up to the most northern island, which is located just next to Craggy Cliffs, and you will find, that's right, another hiding bunker. Now this one's really interesting because if you break the wall in the very front, it will actually take out the top of the bunker with it. And once you break it, you will see that there's nothing beneath it other than just dirt. I don't know if this is intentional for Epic to just be like, hey, yeah, there's nothing under it. We're just trolling you or not, but it is very interesting that, you know, you can actually see it. More than likely though, it is just a glitch and they didn't intend for that. And I wish I could end this number 12 spot right here, yet sadly guys, there is another bunker in the map. Located underwater in the southwest portion of the map, closest to, I guess, Holly Hedges, there is yet another bunker. Now, if you're not in theater mode, it's actually very difficult to find. So if you really want to get a good look at it, that's probably the best way to do it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's chilling there. If you go to Rainbow Rentals, which is an unnamed POI, just below that, you can kind of swim underwater and you'll see a bunch of coral surrounding Again, that gross metal bunker. So, so far in total, there have been three found, and really at this point, I think I'm just waiting to see more. But, um, yeah. Is it a troll? Most likely. People are speculating it's gonna be a portal that takes us back to the old map. I doubt it. I really think it's just epic trolling us to get us to talk about something that's never gonna happen. And, uh, anyways, yeah, there's your bunker. Now let's move on. Now the bunker is not the only thing to return to the map. And fortunately this time we have something a little bit more exciting. So you guys remember that truck statue which was located outside of Retail Row back in the old map? Well, Truckosaurus, as people have been calling him, has returned. Very exciting news. If you go off the shore of dirty docks, you will see a chest poking out of the water. And as you get closer, you will see, that's right, our man is back chilling in the water. Now he's taken all sorts of different forms over the seasons and it's kind of cool to see him just relaxing. Underwater? Is, is he dead? Does he have the ability to die? I don't know, but honestly, it's just a cool little addition back into the map. And it's cool because Epic has actually thrown a lot of these nods to the past map into this, and we'll get to those later. Um, but this was one of the more notable ones that I just wanted to talk about first. Now, moving on to number 10, let's talk about that swimming mechanic. Wow, I mean, what a fun and interesting way that you can dolphin dive through the water. It just seems like such an original and, and a creative idea on Epic's behalf, and uh, it, 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 yeah, it's a reference to something else. So Fortnite is truly infamous for taking pop culture references and throwing them into their game in a very integrated way, and this is just yet another one of those. Now, due to the limits of fair use and copyright stuff, I'm not gonna be able to show this for very long, but the swimming mechanic is actually a reference to the movie don't mess with the Zohan. Zohan? Anyways, it's that weird movie with Adam Sandler. There's a scene in that movie where Adam Sandler uses that swimming technique to catch up to a moving sea dew And um, basically, that's where Epic got this one from. I always appreciate these, so I'll just say, you know, well done, Epic. Well done. 
Now moving on to our number nine spot, along with some old friends returning to the map, we've also seen some new faces. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to a new figure in the map, and that is Pipe Man. So Pipe Man is located on the southern part of the map, just next to the smaller snowy mountain, and uh, he he's just he's just vibing, looking out over the ocean. Now with the past map, we've had all sorts of different characters take the form. Most notably, I think, were the two rocks that fell in love and then had a kid, and now we have Pipe Man. I'm very excited to see whether Epic is going to make a little storyline. I mean, it doesn't even have to be love related, but just anything with this guy. Um, I think it would be pretty cool. But with that said, I mean, the man is cool and he's clearly vibe and just chilling. So leave him be, let him take his time and, and maybe, you know, if we're lucky, he'll do something for us. Okay, now moving on to number eight. This is uh, more of a gameplay secret, but something I missed that really should have been in yesterday's video. And I had to get this to you guys. So we briefly discussed the new fishing mechanic in the game yesterday, and one of the most common things I guess you could say you can get from fishing are fish. There are small fries which heal 25, floppers which heal 50, and slurp fish which heal either 50 shield or health. And so basically what I'm trying to get at is that these are one of the most useful items in the game. So all three variants of fish take one second to use, and that is basically the core feature that makes these so good. The only other items you can carry that heal health are obviously the med kits and then the bandage and bandage bazooka, and they take much longer to use. I mean, the bandage bazooka is pretty quick, but it doesn't heal near as much as these fish. Because with the small fries, you can carry a total of five for 125 health, but with the floppers that heal 50, you can carry four. And even with the slurp fish, you can heal three for up to 150 added health. And the reason that I wanted to mention this is that I promise you that this is going to become a meta for this new season. The healing meta, I guess, I don't, I don't know. Think about how useful it is to get 50 health off or 50 shield off in one second, quicker than you would with a mini. So in any sort of build fight, these are going to be absolutely crucial, I guarantee you, for both competitive and in your just casual games. But what's better than that is think about end game heal offs. If you're not able to reach your enemy and all you can do is heal and you have four of these, you basically have a guaranteed win versus someone who's using a med Kit. It's going to be absolutely insane. Um, so just keep a look on these because I promise you they're going to be used a lot in the following months. Now, moving on to number seven, I want to talk about old locations. There's been a lot of old locations featured in the map. We had risky reels even as an unnamed POI, but there's another thing that I thought was really cool. So I'm sure most of you guys remember the original shipping containers, one of the more iconic places of original Fortnite, not even one of the best dropping spots, but it is something that always stood out to the player's mind. Well, with the new map at Dirty Docks, we actually have the shipping containers slightly returned. Now, it's not an exact one-off copy, but I mean, if you look at this place, it doesn't really get much closer than that. Just a super cool homage paying reference to one of the most memorable places in original Fortnite. Now, moving on to number six, I wanted to talk about a glitch. Now, we've seen the boat go through water as a boat. We've seen the boat go over land as a car. But get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because now we have it all. Boats in the air. So yeah, there's this weird glitch going around where if you use the boat over the waterfall, it will think you're just still in the water as you go into the air, and um, you'll basically just continue flying through the air. With the rocket, it's basically a mix of the mech and plane in one. It's gonna get patched pretty soon, but this is one of the most interesting start of season glitches I've ever seen, and I thought it would be good to include for your guys' viewing entertainment. Moving on to number five. Really good piece of information to know. Probably should have been in yesterday's video, but I didn't know it yesterday. So in chapter one of Fortnite, if you broke a structure that was supporting a chest, the chest would disappear without giving you any loot. And that has actually since changed with this new update. So now when you break something supporting the chest, you get the items out of it. And this is a super good piece of information to know early game as it's gonna save you a ton of time. When you're in a house and you hear a chest above you, now all you have to do is just break that floor and all the loot will fall down to you. If there's a chest sitting on a bed, for example, it's quicker to break the bed, get the wood, and also all the loot now. But if we want to take this even further, let's talk about structures that are really high up, and specifically, the lighthouse. The lighthouse always spawns with three chests, and if you land at the bottom of it and break the four supporting structures of it out, 
all that loot will fall down to you. What's even better about the lighthouse is it's actually been a super popular drop area. So if you break it down with someone up there, nine times out of 10, they're going to fall to their deaths. And at the very least, they're gonna have at least half health, which should give you a quick and easy finish. Not to mention, it's just one of the greatest feelings in the world seeing them fall down and you know, it's, it's, it's just great. Anyways, moving on to number four, let's talk about another bunker. So located in the Southeast part of the map in the big mountains, we have a huge bunker. There is an unnamed location known as Redacted, which features a bunker that looks strikingly similar to the bunker featured in one of the Save the World trailers. In that trailer, what we see is a player trying to basically break open that door and a bunch of husks following them. So this is very interesting as maybe with storyline, it's saying that this new island takes place in the same world as Save the World. But another possibility, and I think something that we should be looking out for is the likelihood that this is probably going to be the source of the storyline information for for nightmares. I could very easily see this vault breaking open and a ton of husks all flying out as the trailer cinematic for Fort Nightmares. And uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled on this because I think it is going to be a very important piece of information for storyline. Moving on to number three, I wanna talk about EGO, the new group within the map. So in my chapter one storyline video, I talk about a guiding hand, which I refer to as Organization X, basically, the military group that existed on the map. We didn't have a structured name for them, so I just gave them Organization X, whatever they were, military, vendor tech, or anything. And it seems like with our new map, that has actually been replaced with EGO. There is a new military group operating around the map, which I think is very likely related to that bunker, but they also have different spots set up. So along with the bunker, they have all sorts of military bases and barracks set up around the map. And in the seasonal battle pass, there's even a spray for them. And apart from the tier one skins, it is actually the very first thing you unlock after that in the battle pass. That is the spray of their logo, which I just think is really interesting. So EGO or EGO is a group which is operating the map, and I think it's just something important we should note for future upcoming storyline threats. But if we really want to talk storyline, we got to talk about I Island. Okay, so I Island is the central point in the map at which all the other rivers basically connect into. And on top of that, to me, it's got some major Loot Lake vibes. It's a large body of water with an island surrounded in the middle, just like the original Loot Lake. It's the most central location in the map, and to me, that alone is enough that I'm really starting to think that this is going to be a central point with events. I don't know, there's just something creepy and weird about that island that it just, it feels like it's, it's too calm or something. Plus the fact that it's called I Island is just really odd to me. Like if that existed in real life, it would be such a cool phenomenon. And you know, you'd think it would be like, oh, like super cool mansion cabin place or something but they call it I Island. It almost looks like the black hole we saw between the two chapters. It's, um, it's, it's very hard to say, but I just think it's a little creepy. And again, that you guys should look out for this spot. But anyways, everybody coming in at our number one spot, I wanted to save this till the end. We've got another return of some old faces. Located directly between Weeping Woods and Holly Hedges, we have both the Tomato Head and Der Burger Head. I'm really happy that Epic just threw these in. Um, Storyline wise, I don't think it's probably related to anything, but it is important to note that these two figures now exist in our new world. I mean, they've never really played a huge part, but it's just like, what, what are they doing here? And regardless of all that other deeper stuff, it is honestly just cool to see these old faces returns. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through on this one. Um, if you are new to the channel, again, subscribe. We're gonna be having basically daily videos for the next couple of days anyways, just covering everything within the new map. Um, and if you're already subscribed, leave a like. Thank you guys again for watching. I will talk to you later. Peace out, you freaking nerds. This is good though. We're back to a seemingly kind of normal schedule.